Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. This is the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all corners of Canada. Today, we are joined by Deer Lake Mayor Mike Goosney. Now, for those who don't know, the town of Deer Lake offers a charming blend of natural beauty and small town hospitality. Surrounded by lush forests, pristine lakes and rolling hills, Deer Lake, Newfoundland and Labrador is a haven for outdoor enthusiasts. Now, in addition to its natural wonders, Deer Lake boasts a vibrant community spirit and rich cultural heritage. Visitors can immerse themselves in local traditions through festivals, art events, and historical attractions like the Deer Lake Heritage Museum. The town's welcoming atmosphere extends to its cozy calves, family-owned restaurants, and boutique shops where visitors can sample delicious Newfoundland cuisine and shop for unique souvenirs. Now, whether it's hiking through breathtaking landscapes, enjoying a leisurely stroll along the waterfront, or simply relaxing in the serenity of nature, Deer Lake offers an unforgettable experience for travelers seeking tranquility and the adventure alike. This is Cross Border Interviews with Mayor Mike Goosney. Mayor Mike, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by asking you where your sense of duty to serve your community came from. That's a great question. I, I'm i going to go back now as far as 2011 when I lived in Labrador City and uh, there was a by-election came up due to a provincial seat. The councillor today uh, obtained the, the provincial seat and opened up the council, municipal council seat. So I ran there and uh, I won. And that really uh, kind of started the, the trend. What was it about the municipal realm that first drew you into politics? I like to think I'm a problem solver. So you hear, obviously, potholes every single year, potholes, 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 working in trades. And I'm like, there's got to be a better way of doing things. Just uh, I think I got something to bring to the table that can hopefully contribute. And it did. And so far, it seems to be still doing that. So now, from what I can gather, and this is where Newfoundland and Labrador's uh, election results are not easily accessible for those who are outside the province. Uh, mm -hmm. I gather you first were elected to Deer Lake Council in 2017, correct? Yeah, so I started in Labrador City in Labrador, Labrador West, I guess, sir. And it was 2011. And then in 2017, yes, I ran Deer Lake and obtained the deputy mayor prior to this seat as mayor. So besides potholes, was there an issue going on in the community at the time that you said, okay, I want to try to help fix my community. And I believe my voice would be able to be the best served on council because you could have given back in many different ways through nonprofits, through volunteerism, but you chose municipal politics at the end of the day to get involved in. What was it about that time frame that really made you say, okay, it's time to step up? It can't just be a vacancy on council. There has to be other underlying issues, weren't there? Uh, not not to make it look like I'm under under pressure with a hot conversation, but I get heating issue going on here in the office. So mind if I have to wipe no worries. out. Um, no worries. Uh, most honest, most honest. most people listen to this, so they won't be seeing the 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 sweat. I'm not hit, asking the hard hitting <laughs> questions not, here. I'm not sweating because <laughs> I'm uncomfortable either. So thanks again. Um, I guess you know they they often say that everybody in politics has got a selfish reason or there's some selfish intent to, and and I can attest that because mine personally, uh, my daughter lives in Ontario. And she grew up in Ontario and, you know, me and her mom had decided that's the way it was going to be. And, you know, no better way to contribute to society or to a community that you're going to want your child to come back to, to visit maybe in the future as she gets older and maybe become, you know, a citizen as well. So that that totally is the driver. Um, and it's easy to emulate, I guess, when you see other, you know, I live in Alberta, my daughter lives in Ontario, you see so much more i guess things are prosper something as simple as like what you call a splash pad i mean i see him in edmonton 10 years prior to coming back to newfoundland and it was just one of those things that drives you to really want to make your community better now for someone who has the tenure on council uh starting in labrador city and now in deer lake has the role of municipal government changed in your opinion over those uh now almost 14 years yeah, I would like to think it's get, getting, uh, I would say it's getting harder, actually, for a lot of people, because 
at the onset um, during the by election, I, I didn't use social media to get elected. And I didn't lose a poll. I worked at door to door to door to door, minus 30, hard campaigning day and night, um, treated very much like a provincial or federal election for the time put in. And uh, you see a lot of, I, I, I watch politics at all levels all around the country and uh, it is seeming seemingly to be harder with a lot of social media. I mean, there's so many different outlets now that people, you know, um, falsely accused of things that they're not even a part of, or, you know, in a lot of places, there's 270 mm -hmm. uh, municipalities in, in the province of Newfoundland Labrador. Uh, some are very small, some are, you know, larger cities, I guess. And um, it can take a toll on a volunteer, you know? And I can see how some people don't make it through because of by-election or you really got to look to what you sign up to but i must say um in that span of time from the start to now training has become a lot more available much more available so kudos to you know all departments that are involved in that um, and then there's small is small town issues of conflict of interest um how do you have a business or how do you, you know, your brother's got a business or your sister's cousin's uncle got a business. And next thing you know, it's the perception of that's why you're there. Right. But uh, nine chances out of 10, that's not the case. And obviously it's politics. So I've got one council who served two terms together. It was his first term in Deer Lake. And uh, I often say after conversations we solve the world tomorrow, we'll start with our community. And you get a chuckle sometimes if there's something contentious because they'll say, you know what? The odd part about this is uh, when you sign up, you're 60% guilty because that's what people think politicians are, right? Crooks. And that's, I mean, that's the, I'll, I'll say this and I, I've said it prior and I've probably been told not to say it publicly or whatever, but my father served in the military for 25 plus years and he told me, so I'd rather have a son or a, a daughter in a uh, mafia role than a son in different politics, right? Wow. So, yeah, heavy. I mean, I guess when you you serve in the Canadian military government, you come back and you become a legionnaire, and then there's some discrepancies and disagreements of service and, you know, different things. And it was uh, prior to, uh, he, he always said prior to, it's my late father, he's always said prior to, he said, ah, I'll get you, they'll crook you in, there's going to be some offer to you, someone will pass something across the table, you'll take it. And never, not, not a chance in this world that could happen. And, uh, before he passed, he even said to keep going. He said, you're one of the few. And that's not to condone or condemn any anyone else, but I mean, we hear the perception daily and what politics people think is all about, right? So how do you combat that? Because you're right. It's not just a Newfoundland Labrador thing. This is something I hear across this country when I speak to municipal leaders, that the trust and the desire even to uh, respect the role of a politician, a mayor or a councillor or an MHA or an MLA or an MPP or an MP even, is so mm -hmm. far gone. How do you keep your sort of centeredness and ensure that the things that you do don't reflect badly on yourself, but in return, don't reflect badly on the community as a, as a whole? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really great question. I guess the reality is you got to look yourself in the mirror every night and know when you go to bed that you're doing the right thing. Um, will there be times of frustration and wanting to say something to combat yourself? Because uh, I really do think a lot of times, well, you know, some of the struggles with politics is that the elected official doesn't say something back to the public to straighten the course, um, more so worried about a vote or offending the one that supported them prior. And I, I just don't go with that role. I'm going to be me again, making a comment of like my father would say publicly, I'm just going to be me. And if uh, accept it for that, then I'll carry on to do it. And when not, then I won't carry on. But that's fine by me because ultimately the goal is to sit here and to try to make the community better off than when you came into it. So. How do you do that? Because at the end of the day, you were the person around that council table who has to make that ultimate decision. You have to make that vote. You have mm -hmm. to lay your head at night and believe that you're doing the best for your community. And I'm assuming after your tenure in politics, municipal politics so far, you've had some pretty tough choices to make over the last few years, particularly over the last five years, let's say, with the pandemic. How do yeah. you ensure that you're making those tough choices and those right choices that are in the greater good of the community? 
You know, I, I like to think that I <clears throat> still to this day, I, I say it often in a community of <clears throat> 52, around 5,200 people. Um, when you're sitting around the table with your, you know, your six other colleagues from council, uh, your deputy mayor and your council members, um, you really had to put aside all the internal, you had to put aside whichever and treat it as if you're still knocking on the door, the elections still operating, you're still into campaign mode. You, you have to treat it that way because when you come inside here and you think if it's only seven of us, you're going to represent and you're going to fail pretty quick. How much if every time you walk into that council meeting, I'm assuming you have to be prepared for anything, but not mm -hmm. be so sort of concrete in your decision making because you'll get the agenda package beforehand. How important is it for you to gauge uh, residents' sort of interest on issues? Because when I speak to municipal leaders, I hear there's an apathy when it comes to municipal politics in this country. People are just not as engaged as they once were. Do you find that when you sort of approach people to gauge where they want to see the community go forward? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if that's a fault of mine in, in one aspect, because uh, again, back to social media, sometimes it can get overwhelming trying to uh, you know, I, I, the only promise I ever made to anybody is that I'll do my best and to be as accessible and as transparent as possible. And <clears throat> to this day, I think I've done a, a decent job at that. And if you ask around the community, I think you reflect the same answer. But um, again, just making sure you keep up, keep everybody in the loop as much as possible. Um, prior to this council, there was never a live stream feed. So um, I'm, I'm always continuously going back over the live stream to see, just to review um, the meeting. Sometimes the things were said or some things might have been missed or just to, you know, take jot notes or, uh, and you can get to see the uptake. So, you know, we're promoting that our gallery is open. I ran on the fact that I want to see public engagement. Um, we, we've done surveys, um, you know, to back to a splash pad. That's one of the things that you know, I keep asking people. So when you go around the table, if you don't get a general consensus or, a, a, you know, full support in a vote, you relate back to it's not about our decision, it's about what we, you know, messaging we got from the community. And it seems to, it makes it less contentious in council because like I tell everybody, listen, hands out. If you don't want to vote in favor of something, I'm not here to dictate. That's the blessing of democracy. And that's the blessing with municipal politics, too. There's no whip votes. It's all individual uh, uh, opinions. Um, you and I both know that the municipality has a jurisdictional role that they play. There are things that you are required to do, but I would say the average resident does not care about those jurisdictional lines in the proverbial sand. Are you seeing more and more people asking you about provincial matters or even federal matters compared to municipal matters? Because you don't go to St. John's to do your job. You don't go to Ottawa to do your job. You're in your community 24 seven. So you make a decision at that council table, you're in the grocery store the next day and people are approaching you on issues when they do talk to you. Is it a gambit of issues they're talking about or are they staying within the jurisdictional purview of the municipality? Uh, for myself, I don't know if it reflects any different for other mayors, possibly. I, I wouldn't think so much, but I have been involved. I've ran two provincial elections, uh, two highly contested seats, well, not highly contested, uh, but against two premiers, um, or with two premiers, I like to say I ran with, ultimately, because that's what you're doing. Um, so people, you know, probably attest with me a little more connected to provincial politics than to ask that question if this is, and I got a great working relationship with the premier here, which is the uh, ran against each other in a by-election or ran in the same race. And um, you do get a lot of questions of provincial, not possibly federal, not as much because it's more of the, the national show people. That's just more of a hype kind of deal. But um, unless it's environmental, then you'll hear something on the federal question sides, um, you know, mitigation of certain things things that happen, I guess, with weather patterns. And yeah, no, there's a lot of tie in between, um, you know, if uh, you don't get an answer from your provincial level or the answer someone wants, they're going to, they want, they want a different answer sometimes and they'll come to myself, definitely.
is is it hard to not just feel like you're passing the buck to the provincial level of government because at the end of the day you only can solve as much as you can do in your job as mayor and as council and sometimes mm -hmm. you have to say unfortunately that is the responsibility of the provincial government you seem like to be a problem solver you talked about being a problem solver at the beginning of this interview is it hard to say it's not our problem so go talk to your mha or who is the premier because uh, you're the the town of deer lake re is represented by the premier of the province of newfoundland and labrador yeah, for me, it's, uh, you know, just to say there is a professional working relationship. I can pick up a phone voice first, but um, people will come in, but I, I, I'm i not one to want to pass the buck. I, and the premier is well aware I, I'll call issues with heads up, say here, uh, I'm not pointing fingers. I was always tired if you point one finger, you got three pointing back at yourself, which is true. Uh, so come to the table with a resolution or you know, some type of resolve because I had there. There's been a few times where I've I've been on media when it comes to our waste management. I mean, it's a regional waste management. We truck our waste, which I won't go there. That's, for this interview, that's a whole different uh, gamut. But uh, you know, again, if it was a Liberal government, a Tory government, and NDP government, I'm still going to be coming to the table because if it, if it needs to be improved or fixed, it's going to I'm going to advocate for that. You know. We're going to talk about some of the issues that your community is facing and some of the accomplishments your community has done over the last few years in a few seconds. But before we do, I want to just ask one final question, because um, as we have a lot of municipal leaders who listen to the show and prospective municipal councillors who uh, uh, listen to the show, what advice would you give a potential some someone some Canadian out there right now who's listening to this interview saying I'm thinking about getting into municipal politics but I'm not sure if I should or not what advice would you give them to sort of help them make that decision for them well first of all I'd say you'd have to have that desire I mean it's it's uh, it's not an easy job but uh, it's a job that anybody can do uh, don't think that you're un uneducated or everybody has something to bring to the table and anyone that wants to do it um, and you're a resident of your municipality and the guidelines that allows you to run, I would encourage each and every person to take a shot at it. But just uh, prior to, if you're if you're going to go to be a councillor, just know that the time and dedication that comes with it, let alone the extra, you know, uh, being in a grocery store, as you mentioned, or trying to fill up your vehicle with gas and get in and get out sometimes it's not always the case but I mean that that's the part that I really enjoy even if it's a you know not so fun conversation or whichever it's always a way to solve a problem so it, is it important for a person like yourself to listen to both sides of every issue because I'm assuming there are people who don't 100% agree with you on every single issue that you have voted on at council how important is it for you to listen to the people who agree with you, but also don't agree with you and want to tell you that they don't agree with you? Yeah, definitely. And I'm, I, you know, I'm, uh, I guess as straight shooter as you can get, and I'll say it right away. I'm, I'm, I'm not always going to get it right. There's times when you'll look back and say, shoot, maybe I should have, but I like to think, you know, I had, I haven't personally had a whole lot of issue. Um, I sat on the side of, on the side of the council with by myself on a single vote that was very contentious in the last council um, due to a crematorium. Um, I guess the location where it was going to be in location close to a school and it, it got fairly contentious to the point that there was um, some rallies and some protesting and heavy stuff and you could hear it was in with that mayor or out with that mayor in with Mike as mayor and it, 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 it wasn't comfortable to sit there but it came from just feeling doing what you know the other mind which happens to be in your stomach that tells you what to do and um, you have to vote with your conscience and it, again it wasn't it's back to what I say now if one council member votes differently or two or three like I told him you didn't lose your vote or gain your vote you had your choice of democracy and you presented it and that's what it's about so there's no losing a vote or winning a vote or gaining a vote it's uh and again, when when you walk away from the table, we, you know, it's in our act that we we still stay united, even though a vote is different, right? So that was the little bit of the difficult part for me, where people are trying to, you know, maneuver to 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 want me to 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 rally against council, and ultimately, like I said, that's not how this works. So that's my vote, right? So.
No, I appreciate that. I am cautious of time because I know you're a busy mayor, so I want to turn to my second mm -hmm. segment now. But before I start asking this line of question, I'm going to preface it by saying this is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a direction of council. This is not a policy of council. This is the mayor's opinion and his opinion only. Uh, I don't know why, but I seem to still get emails from this question, but here we are in 2024. Mayor, in your opinion, what do you believe is the biggest issue facing the town of Deer Lake as of recording this episode? Financially, and it's one that people probably, you know, it's it's easy when your curbside waste goes off to in the abyss and you don't see it no more. And But when they see the cost and it, it reflects in the taxes, uh, it's it's quite substantial. And uh, until we get that back to where it needs to be, it's going to keep increasing because obviously the cost of fuel increases, the environmental impacts that we're supposed to be, you know, repairing or fixing instead of uh, making it worse uh, has continued to, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that's going to solve itself at some point because it's just not feasible, right? So what can council do in the short term? Because this seems like it's not going to be, as I was reading a few articles that this, this is not something that's just spawn, spawn up in 2024. You were talking mm -hmm. about this in 2023. And even in September, I read a Saltwire interview with yourself on this issue specifically. What is council doing in the short term to sort of try to help alleviate some of these issues? Because you're right. Things are continuously going to increase in costs until this issue is solved. Yeah, so we've, we've met with the board and obviously again, the premiers, the MHA and ministers and, you know, I, I, I don't uh, beat around the bush sometimes and, you know, use be professional in, in your wording, but uh, this is uh, quite the waste or a, me a mess, right? And um, you listen to the federal government and I guess world governments are talking about environment and pay, you know, cutting out on fossil fuels. And I'm just thinking that it, it's one that's probably going to get under my skin for quite some time. Um, but speaking again, to I'm the right state, show that's based in Alberta, if you talk about fossil fuels. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, I worked in Alberta and uh, I'll, I'll give an example and I don't mean to go into federal politics or whatever, hey, but that's why I love uh, about the show. We talk about whatever we talk about. Yeah, so if I challenge any Canadian citizen to look, you know, 360 degrees and tell me something that uh, is produced without uh, a byproduct of fossil fuel, you won't find it. Yep. It's, it's not possible. Your clothing, every, I say it daily. So here we are trying to, uh, you know, bring the temperature of the world down back to what, and again, no offense to any climate, you know, scientists or whatnot, but. I think you need to focus on the, the higher priorities of uh, food pricing and housing before before we try to uh, shut down how we've been living for the last century. So, <clears throat> so you talked about something that is very outside, not outside the jurisdiction, but outside the municipality's control. The cost and the uh, financial situation that comes with uh, the use of the waste facility is dictated by the board that is running that regional waste uh, landfill. Um, but you, at the end of the day, you have your own controls that you can put into place. You have a budget that you pass yearly or bi-yearly, depending on what sort of method you do to budget your town budget. What do you? What can you do in the short term to make the least impact on your residents because right now, municipalities are finding themselves under a crunch. You do not have an unlimited supply of money to solve everyone's issue. So you have to make some very tough choices. What is the municipality doing in the short term to alleviate some of the pressures that comes with inflation, that comes with the economic sort of situation that the country is in right now to offset some of the struggles that residents are having? So, yeah, well, <clears throat> the logistics on the on the you know, the curbside uh, waste management is one thing that we're, we're kind of hampered not to be able to, but we, the management team here is talking with the board to, uh, we have what, you know, a bulk cleanup in the springtime, which costs uh, quite a substantial amount of money. Um, when you think about, you know, I, again, the logistics, I'm, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the West Coast Newfoundland, but 
we truck it one way, then we truck it back another way, then we truck it back another way. So cutting out two of those trucking slots, I guess the best way to say, is is one way that hopefully we're going to be able to get um, some discount on what we've been paying before. And there, but, there's, there's another side to, to it. I mean, a radical side, which you'd have to have a full board of council to do it. And I'm not, I'm not sure that's where anybody wanted to go, myself included. But at some point, you had to put your foot down and say enough's enough. And maybe just, you know, go back to your old waste site to see how much uh, disruption that causes before. It, you know, it's sad to say it, but uh, residents seem to, it works for people sitting on the, um, not in government when they, as they say, cause a bit of noise, a uh, squeaky wheel gets grease, right? So sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Now, you've talked about something very macro in your community. Waste is something that is affecting everyone, but the individual in your community has issues as well. We talked about potholes at the beginning of the show. Potholes, people probably complain a lot. We're in snow season right now. People assume that snow needs to be cleared more often on roads or in a better way on roads. Then there is, we need more service levels at the library or park upgrades, or even like you said, a splash pad. How do you balance the needs of the community against the needs of the one? Because you want to make sure everyone feels like their tax dollars, their property taxes are being spent, that they are feeling the impact of that sort of that use of their property taxes. What do you do and what does council do to ensure that everyone feels like their community is benefiting every single one and not just leaving some out while they're collecting taxes? Yeah, no, that's, uh, I mean, that's that's the balance, I guess, you know, the, the juggle of all, all time trying to, um, I've spoken to residents, we're doing an expansion on our arena at the moment, uh, it's an annex project, which is up around, I think, can we say close to $9 million, um, and I've spoken to residents that have never stepped foot in the arena in their life, right, but yet, they like that walking trail, that nature trail, so uh, I, I think we've been doing a very good job, and a lot of times it's it's not always the bigger the tax dollars that uh, get people out and invested in the community. We've been doing a lot of uh, arts and culture type events, uh, shutting down Main Street with car shows, um, just getting people out and engaged. You know, when I again I lived in uh, Alberta for seven years, I mean it was no problem to find an event in a large city whether it be Fort McMurray, Alberta, um, Edmonton, Calgary, you know what I'm saying, Grand Prairie. So we're trying to, you know, um, put a small community on the bigger spotlight. And Deer Lake's very fortunate when it, it's all in its name, Deer Lake. I mean, we have a beautiful, beautiful lake. We've got a new vendor that we've worked with uh, to develop on the beach. He's, it's, it's been well, an uptake. It's a draw to the community. People are coming from out of town to want to go there we have we even called us uh, sand bony so our sand is is raked every day by machine it's uh, it's quite a beautiful spot and then it's also got a a river that uh, the almighty hummer river that allows people to go salmon fishing i mean it's a beautiful beautiful area there's there's lots more going on than just waste trust me uh, that's not always the biggest issue but no. there's, there's other there's other things here like everywhere else is struggling is uh, trying to develop affordable housing for people, you know, in a timely fashion. And that seems to be the national crunch all over. So are developers knocking on your door? I wouldn't say no, no, uh, it's not that we're landlocked. I think there, there's some good developments going in, in the works here. Right. Um, yeah, no, there's, there's potential. And again, listening to uh, some of the, you know, moves of federal government relaying down to provincial government, which relays down to us. Um, taking out some of the red tape for a certain piece of land could definitely, you know, it all works together. Um, it's long overdue, obviously, but uh, again, it's uh, it's hard to it's hard to get that opinion, I guess, through to upper governments. Sometimes it comes from government down, but I guess a lot of advocating through FCM and MNLs and all those boards across the country um 
It's, well, we, uh, we have a massive following in Ottawa. I'm not sure why. Maybe there's people listening in government to the show on a regular basis. So hopefully they will hear that message loud and clear. Um, mm -hmm. Before I, I turn to my last subject, which I think you're going to be getting on to when you were talking about some of the great places in your community, I want to talk about the accomplishments. What's the thing in your time that you look back on, you say, you know what, we got it right. We did it right and it has set up the town of Deer Lake for the future. Or what is in the process of getting it right that you have set up the town to be better than you were when it, you first got elected? Oh my goodness, that's a great question. But... <laughs> Putting you on the spot right here on a Tuesday yeah, morning. No, I'll, yeah, no, my brain is spinning here thinking, you know, there's so many different things we've got, uh, you know, recreation committee, even even just the way internally finance is working a little different. Um, there's there's a multitude around town, tree lighting, uh, bridge lighting. Again, the smaller things that all add up in a community to, to really make it shine has been um, committees. There's another one called Deer Lake Live, and it's it's an arts and culture event, and it includes communities, health and wellness committees. Uh, it's it's there's been a lot more community engagement. I feel comfortable in saying that. Um, you know, the bigger projects like the annex, the multi million dollar projects. There's been quite a lot of uh, water and sewer upgrades, but I'll be the first to say, Chris, I I don't know too many people that get excited about uh, once once your street's done, your street's done, right? It's, yes, uh, God, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, I, I again. I, Go ahead. It's it's the little things. And, you know, having the, I guess, authority to work with youth in the community and seniors and involving all of them. And, you know, sometimes it's just the simplest thing of bringing a child that uh, we've had some children that have health, had health issues and they've overcome them. And, you know, seeing them come back to the community from Toronto sick kids and make them the mayor for the day or let them be the fire chief for the day. And just the fun stuff, right? That really, I think, impacts community. Um, I appreciate that. I want to turn to my last subject because, again, I'm cautious of time. And I want to talk about my favorite subject on the show, and that is tourism. Because I've made a pledge that if you come on the show, I come to your community. So I will be coming nice. to Deer Lake sometime in 2024. Once I've got my whole itinerary set for Newfoundland and Labrador, because I try to make it worth my while and get there for two weeks and visit the entire province nice. and visit some of these great communities. So as a tourist, as someone coming to your community, what are the hidden gems that people should come and see in Deer Lake if they're ever finding themselves in your neck of the woods? Well, again, it comes back to <clears throat> the community's name, the lake itself, and all the surrounding amenities that go with it. Um, you know, we've got a beautiful RV park right here in the community, another one right um, just on the outside or just on the skirts of the community next to a river, the Hummer River. It's, uh, it's an all, it's a 365 tourist destination snowmobiling in the winter skiing uh, marble marble mountain is uh, one of the nicest uh, ski hills in in atlantic canada by far um that's just 20 or 30 minutes away grossmore national park is 30 minutes away uh we're, we're right in the dead center we're across here and uh, you know we've got it's 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 deer lake's taken a um, the airport's there, obviously, it's right, at, you know, it's within minutes in town. It's the ultimate package for somebody that's, uh, we're strategically located, I guess. I don't know how you would say strategically, but it works out for us. Um, we didn't actually, you know, physically push the town to its location, but it, uh, it's a beautiful space. And uh, you get a lot of good uptake from when people come here. And we're fortunate to, uh, well, probably not so fortunate, but we get more of the snow, so the winter activities. Um, hunting and fishing is is top grade, right? I've spent some time in Alberta. And, is yeah, it true that you have the it. best salmon fishing in all of uh, Newfoundland, from what I've been told from fellow councillors and mayors across your province? I'll take. I'll I'll say yes. I'll attest that. <laughs> Well, yeah. when I get there, hopefully you and I can go out to the, uh, the rivers and go salmon fishing then. <laughs> Not a problem. I actually had, uh, it's interesting you said that. I don't know if you're aware, but there's a gentleman in Calgary, Jim Hoy, and he's he's got a, a national fishing show called Dawn Store Fisherman. 
and it's uh, he's got, he's aired with NTV here for now for quite some time, and we had him here um, prior to myself being on council. I had him here on the Humber River, and we did a show together. It was really neat to see, and also I got invited back to to go fishing in the Bow River. So hopefully I'll get to take him up on that one of these days. There you go. Um, where do you go in the town after a long day of council meetings, after a long day of work? Where is the, where in the community do you go to decompress, recenter yourself, and know that tomorrow morning you're going to have to make the decisions again and try to make your community better off than you when you got it? Um, I'm on my own worst enemy. I don't go very far. I went. I've got a cabin that's probably <clears throat> I'm going to say 20 kilometers from town cottage i went there maybe four times in the last two and a half years i haven't taken a vacation which i desperately need to at some point i think we all deserve but yeah no i'll generally go back home i'll sit back and watch tv and try to turn off cpac because that's my nhl i guess to, to watch and watch the debate and all the good stuff but uh, to decompress yeah no i go to my cabin every blue moon when I get a chance. And my last question, as we started talking about you on the show, we're ending by talking about Deer Lake. In your opinion, Mayor, what makes the town of Deer Lake such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Well, you know, I think it's it's located next to an airport. That's how, It's an obvious, when you live in the, <clears throat> in the a province with the demographics so large, or ge geography, you've got St. John's, Gander, Deer Lake, um, Stephenville's got an, an airport which hasn't really been operating. <clears throat> Just to be close to that um, is is huge for a lot of people, especially when people that work through, you know, across the world or through the West or commuting and oil and sec gas sectors and mining and all the other professions. Um, but you're right on the tip of Grossmore. You're, you're right on the tip of, um, to me, world-class golf course in Humber Valley. We've got a beautiful golf course here. It's, we've got all the amenities to do on a lake or water resources. And it's, uh, there's a lot, of, it's, it's, it's peaceful. It's, it's really peaceful. It takes, you know, um, I've seen the trend since the pandemic with housing prices shot up in Ontario. And a lot of people sold their homes and came to a good old Deer Lake to settle in and not 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 many that I've spoken to or you know just come back to retire because that's another thing that's another new for me but uh, there's we've had an uptake of people <clears throat> I guess after the pandemic we're figuring what the lockdown was like and how much more free we were here they came to visit and seen the housing prices were lower and you know in comparison and decided to set roots here so that uh, you know they tell other people that we're always here welcome and open so Oh. Just... Oh, okay. No, we're, we're yeah. almost we're <laughs> almost done anyway. Um, Mayor Mike, thank you so much for doing this. I, I I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and talking about the town of Deer Lake. You talk about yourself mm -hmm. and talk about municipal governments. I think it's the most important level of government out there. I think it's the closest to the people and the most impactful to the people. So thank you so much for doing this. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. And again, to our conversation, <clears throat> you know, when you reflect to provincial to federal, one of these days when we all wake up, I shouldn't say wake up, that's kind of rude, but when we realize more and more that every dollar that we spend correctly in municipal, every dollar that we spend correctly in provincial and federal, the pot gets bigger for everybody. Because <clears throat> it's easy to say, well, well, I don't really care, that's not my money, until it, well, provincial taxes are your money, federal taxes are your money. And, you know, the more we treat it like it's our own, I think the better off we can be as a country, a province, and a community. I could not agree with you more on that statement. It is a time that we all start looking at the municipalities as the, it, it, they are in desperate need of uh, a financial reform, and it's in a de desperate need for the use of the proper tools the province and the federal government can give them. So I agree with you wholeheartedly. We, Mayor Mike, we, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we, we might not mint pennies anymore, but they still add up to a dollar. So. <laughs> Certainly can. Thank you so much, yeah. Mayor Mike.
Thank you, Mayor Mike, for joining us today on the Cross Border Interviews. If today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe or follow button now. Stay in the loop with all of our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth cross-border interviews and even our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy over the last six years. Now, if you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, as always, just keep talking.